Hey guys, John here. Today's patch we're going to be making in Citrus, and this one I called Metallic Tumor. And you will see why in just a moment here. So with that being said, this patch is kind of more so meant to be played with the modulation window here with X and Y. As you can see, I key down in here in the notes, mod X is going to be the filter cutoff and mod Y is going to be the filter resonance. So let's take a listen to it and then we'll talk about it after we have a listen. So this is Metallic Tumor. So that's pretty much that patch in a nutshell. If you like the patch, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So if you haven't noticed, this patch was really only using two different notes with a kick in a, in a, in a hi-hat. So not really much going on in the playlist. And that's what I kind of mentioned before is that this patch is more so meant to be played with the modulation X and Y, kind of moving it around for the different sounds. So if we just played a note here... I kind of made it in the way that it, once we go to the top left, it's kind of like the signal's kind of breaking up, like it's trying to get through, but it, it's having a tough time doing so. So we kind of hear some of that like digital distortion, whatever you want to call it. And then as we move it around the grid, it starts to come back. And that's kind of cool once we do stuff rhythmically like this. And each spot has its own kind of different tonality to it. And you can even draw it in circles to have that kind of tonality as well. Or really any shape that you think sounds pretty cool with a beat behind it. So let's kind of dive into this thing first off. So the pitch changes here or the volume here for this main stuff, we're going to be kind of leaving alone here. But we are going to be using nine voices of unison, the panning's all the way to the top, same, same as the volume. The pitch is going to be 69, you know what I'm saying? And then the oversampling is going to be at two right here. So make sure to always turn that on. It kind of helps you, uh, or helps it sound a little bit better, protects from anti-aliasing and all that. If you're confused by anything that I'm saying, there, I have linked a whole Citrus course in the video description. So yeah, check that out if you would like to. So let's start off with our first operator here. So what is happening here? So this is going to be a pulse wave. So this shape is going to be all the way to the top here. And as we scroll over here to the matrix, we can see that something is affecting operator number one, and that is going to be number three. So let's hop into number three and see what that is doing. This is just a sine wave, but it's up at 11. So it's kind of not necessarily a an octave change because it's going to go from two, then it's going to go from four and then eight and then so on and so forth. It's going to be the multiple. So 11 is kind of out of place, but that's kind of the charm of it. And that's why we're only really using a little bit of FM because... Remember, with FM, it is kind of cool to go overboard. I know that sometimes we get these knobs and we just crank them all the way, and eh, we can have some good results, but definitely a little bit goes a long way with FM. You're kind of really carving out the timbre, the, the texture of the sound, kind of adding these interesting harmonics and using different waveforms to kind of modulate the other one. So with that being said, a little bit goes a long way in that sense there. So we just have a sine wave here, up 11 ratio here, and then a little bit here. So exactly, it's probably like 10, 11%, something around that area over there. So operator one is going to be down one octave. So this is going to be one times right over here. Operator number two, what is going on over here? This is going to be a saw wave and this is going to be two as well. And as we can see, operator number two is going to filter number one, same as uh, operator number one. Number three is just going to be used strictly for frequency modulation. So that's not going to be routed anywhere else. It's just going to be FM. Now we have number four. So let's take a look at this one over here. Now this is a square wave and this is down, what is that, one, two octaves because we're dividing two to one and then dividing one again. So that's going to be 0.5. So that's going to be down two octaves for operator number four. And that's going as well to filter number one, but not as much. So one and two are going completely 100% into the filter. Remember, number three is just for FM, and then number four is going to be 52%. Now, this one's kind of just that extra low end to kind of just fill in that space, and I felt the, um, a square wave might be kind of nice for this. So with that being said, let's go check out the filter and see what's happening in there. So with this one, it says PHS. So we right-click this here, and we're using the Cherry Phaser. And I feel like this filter is kind of not really used that often. I feel like sometimes we can overlook this one, but it is a very, very, very cool filter. So... 
you'll be surprised at some of the cool sounds that you can get out of this here. So with the phaser or the cherry phaser selected here, we're on alt times three for this version here. And we have the envelope envelope amount all the way up. The cutoff is about 68%. Let's, we can always bump that up to 69, you know what I'm saying? And then resonance is going to be at 40. So the bandwidth feedback, this button right here, as we can see on the top left, 40% for that. So now we think about the modulation. So what's happening here? So we look here, mod X is going to be the filter cutoff and mod Y is going to be the filter resonance. So how do we do that? So let's go to the filter and take a look at what's happening for the filter cutoff. So filter one, we see this cutoff right here and we see this little light kind of being flicked on right here. So we know that something is being activated right over here. So let's select this cut right here. And then we can see also there's a little bit of LFO going on here. And this is going to be the rhythmic kind of side to it. Now, remember in Citrus, you really want to pay attention to this, this uh, grid right here because this is going to be how we can make things really close in time. Now, this one isn't exactly, it's a little off, a little humanistic, humanistic is human is something you know what i'm saying making it more human sounding and we can always grab this waveform and and move it left and right how we want to so keep that in mind and we're kind of just moving a little of these knobs so the speed a little bit to the right this tension over here a little bit to the left minus 25 skew minus 100 and then the pulse width is at zero and you can kind of just carve out that feeling and kind of moving the cut of that way so this is happening automatically behind the scenes even if we don't have any of our uh, mod x and y going on so that being said, we go over here to mod X. Now we have this shape here and it's not completely full influence. You kind of have to change these nodes around because you want to go to the very bottom and then you kind of dial in how, how much you want this to go down and then go all the way to the top and then kind of move this knob up here to see how much of a limit, how much of a range do you want your, your modulation to have. And this is where you would do that in, in this graph to kind of, you know, like, uh, I guess you would say kind of hone in, kind of keep it in the, uh, in the lane stay in your lane i guess you could call it like that and that's going to correspond to modulation x now if we look at modulation y this is going to be this resonance knob as you can see this little light lit over here so let's click this over here and then we go to mod y so we can see that's also lit up as well and it's going to be a similar shape here slightly different but uh yeah that's kind of the the concept behind that all the way to the left is the lowest value all the way to the right is the highest value so this is going to be a lot of trial and error if you're doing this, if you're recreating something like this, is drag this note all the way to a certain spot that you like, and then go to your modulation, turn that all the way to the left and see how you like that sound. If you want more, then you want to come back into this graph and adjust from there. And once you're happy with that value, then you can go all the way to the right and then do the same thing, kind of go up as well. If it's too much, then maybe bring this down here. And then that way you can set an, a perfect range so every spot within your modulation, you will actually like. You will actually say, okay, this is a cool, this is actual a useful value for me. So that's something to always kind of keep in mind. Not to mention, you can add more nodes in here as well and make some curves and make some different kind of things. So as you sweep through your modulation, it goes maybe more positive, more negative, so on and so forth. So that's also a possibility. I didn't do that here, but that's kind of a thing as well. We're going to be using some wave shaping over here. So make sure to select this on button and this amp is going to be all the way at the top for maximum wave shaping. And that's pretty much it for the filter. Not too complicated, I hope. But yeah, that's kind of the uh, concept behind that. And definitely check out the face, the cherry phaser. It's really, really, really cool. So moving on from that, we should cover the FX and see what's going on here. So no chorus. I dragged this all the way down to zero. Didn't feel like I need it. Plus we have nine voices and chorusing can kind of maybe kind of me a little bit too much for this patch here. So we look at our effects here. We have one delay. This is going to be on the feedback 50% of the timing at two. So changing from the default three down to two and then the stereo offset zero and then the volume 50%. And for the actual FX amount, the output of the effects is going to be around 45% or so. And then that looks like is all we use. It's just a delay here. However, I have this routed to my Valhalla reverb as I frequently do because I always feel like external reverbs always kind of sound better or maybe just your favorite reverb that you like the sound of so you can do that as well so with that being said that's basically this patch in a nutshell not necessarily too complicated I mean we're only using four operators using one to FM just a little bit like I said a little bit goes a long way and yeah that's kind of covers basically this we're just kind of using basic wave forms as well so a pulse wave all the way at the top two is a saw wave you can always right click it and select from that menu if you'd like to and then sine wave for number three and a square wave for number four so 
yeah that's pretty much it for the waveforms there and then here in the center we did talk about nine orders of unison and these settings as well so hopefully you learned something and definitely play around with this metallic tumor because what's more fun than a metallic tumor i have no idea so with that being said let's check it out one more time and see if you like it I can imagine you have a lot of fun with that patch. It's really fun to play around with. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.